Good day. Thank you for tuning into this 2018 general election candidate forum for Thurston County prosecuting attorney. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and Thurston Community Media. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, works to get out the vote, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with governing bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of age 16 and up. I'm Allison Brooks from the League, and I'll be moderating this forum. The candidates for Thurston County Prosecuting Attorney are Victor Minhares and John Thunheim. For this forum, each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. Then I'll ask them questions in alternating order. The person first asked the question will have two minutes for a response, followed by a one minute response from the other candidate. There will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We'll begin with opening statements from the candidates, beginning with Victor Minharis, followed by John Thunheim. Victor, do you have two minutes for an opening statement? Please proceed. Thank you very much, Allison. It's an honor to be here with the League. I've been a member of the League for a while, and I really enjoy its activities and the things, good things it does for the community. What I'd like to uh, talk about today is uh, what my qualifications are and what I'd like to do as uh, the prosecutor of Thurston County. Again, my name is Victor Minharis. I'm a graduate of Stanford Law School. I was a prosecutor for almost 15 years, uh, working at a very high level on white collar crime prosecutions, as well as murders, robberies, home invasion crimes. I managed a task force involving over $100 million in public contracts and looked for cor corruption as part of a a team there with investigators from various agencies and several prosecutors. I have been uh, a manager at Honda North America where I manage outside counsel who defended the corporation against lawsuits in various states across the union, including Los Angeles. Thurston County is in a lot of trouble. We have a, a budget right now where we're spending more than we're actually taking in in revenue. Part of that reason is because the prosecutor's office is mismanaged. The jail has been filled and overfilled a time and time again, year after year. It costs $43,000 a bed uh, for a year to hold one inmate. And we've got a 488 uh, bed jail. We need to solve the problems of continuances, failure to turn over evidence at an early time, enough uh, so that stop continuances, and to tighten up the filing and diversion program management uh, within the prosecutor's office, along with our coalition partners. If we don't do this, we're looking towards uh, the county headed towards bankruptcy. We've got to change that. Uh, we haven't had any change of significance since 2003. That's why I'm running for Thurston County prosecutor, and I really would like your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. John, you have two minutes for an opening statement. All right. Thank you. Uh, I too would uh, very much like to thank the League of Women Voters and Thurston Community uh, Media for hosting this particular event. It's really important that the voters of this county uh, hear directly from the candidates, and this is a great forum to do it. My name is John Thunheim, and I'm running for re-election as Thurston County Prosecutor. I've served this community for 30 years now in the prosecutor's office, starting as a legal intern, then as a criminal deputy prosecutor, and uh, as then elected prosecutor since 2011. During my time as a deputy prosecutor, I held a variety of assignments, uh, but uh, the bulk of my work was done in an area we call special victims, which is a focus on child abuse, sexual assault, and crimes uh, against uh, family members, domestic violence. During my time as a deputy prosecutor, I co-led the effort to start a program called Monarch Children's Justice and Advocacy Center, which is a wraparound coordinated service uh, organization providing services to abused children. Since 2011, uh, in my first term, I focused on improving victim services even further by opening the second only in the state family justice center 
uh, here in Thurston County. Using a similar model as Monarch, we now provide wraparound services and coordinated services to victims of domestic violence uh, and their children. In my second term, I focused on a, a portfolio of uh, innovations that we called Innovative Justice, which has resulted in the addition of several new diversion programs and other pathways for those accused of crimes out of criminal justice and into a, into a system that can best uh, support them and serve them. Uh, in the future, I intend to continue to work on this effort to better serve the citizens of Thurston County and I would appreciate the consideration of your vote. Thank you. Thank you both. And so we're going to go to our first question, and Victor will start. You both actually discussed some of your experience, but we'd like you to elaborate and elaborate on what experience makes you suitable for this position. Victor, you get to go first for two minutes, and then, John, you have one minute. I think what I bring to uh, this position is a diversity of experience. Uh, I've been in several different um, governmental uh, roles and in Los Angeles County where I started my career uh, there were 40 courthouses just in within the county and I've tried cases in a good third of those uh, so I saw different courts and different ways of doing things I was there during the merger of the superior and district court systems both at the clerk level and the and, uh, Superior Court level, where some of the tasks of the Superior Court were taken uh, by the District Court on a, a trial basis. So I've seen numerous experiments on how to operate and manage court systems effectively. And that's how I started uh, my career, is experiencing that and seeing how different systems work. Uh, I think that if you've worked in one office for your entire career, uh, you tend to think that we're doing things the right way and to change it and move away from that path uh, is a problem for you because it seems foreign. To me, uh, n trying something new is not foreign. It's a necessary part of finding the most efficient, effective, and just way of bringing people uh, and the community values into the justice system. Thank you. John, you have a minute to elaborate on your experience. All right, thank you. What I bring is experience working actually in Thurston County and in the Thurston County justice system and with all of the various partners uh, that we have in the Thurston County justice system. Uh, as I said, I started as a deputy prosecutor, but then uh, rose uh, to management levels and was chief of staff for my predecessor uh, for seven years uh, before I was actually elected prosecuting attorney. And I've been acting as the prosecuting attorney uh, for the last seven and a half years. Uh, and in that role, I've uh, uh, learned how to manage and how to lead uh, lawyers and a law office. I will also say that working in the Thurston County criminal justice system, I bring a leadership style that is constantly looking at ways to improve the future, to improve things uh, for the system, to make the system better. And that's why I focused myself on this portfolio of programs uh, known as innovative justice, and I'll continue to do that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both again. And we'll go on to our next question. And John, you'll get to start for two minutes. What steps have you taken or proposed to take to examine practices and policies with respect to immigrants within the local criminal justice system? Uh, and it, also, uh, I'm sorry, and if yeah. you need me to repeat the question, that's absolutely no problem. Uh, in our uh, criminal justice system, uh, basically the law treats everybody the same. And so as a case comes into the office, we look at uh, all of the various issues in the case, also including what, who the person is and what their background is. And you know, often we will take into consideration uh, their status in terms of determining whether uh, we should uh, resolve the case in some way that doesn't necessarily impact their immigration status. We'll continue to look at these practices and policies as I uh, move forward in the role of prosecuting attorney. Uh, but uh, I am committed to making sure that um, immigrants, as everybody else, are treated the same and treated fairly in our criminal justice system. Thank you. Victor, you have one minute to answer the question. If it needs repeating, I'm happy to do it. Could you repeat it, please? Yes. What steps have you taken or proposed to take to examine practices and policies with respect to immigrants within the local criminal justice system? 
Well, I've already taken some steps in that direction. Uh, on uh, Tuesday of this week, on September 25th, if you're watching this later, uh, the c county commissioners, based on a request from the prosecutor's office, had put on the consent calendar a, a plan to certify uh, the, the county's compliance with several federal immigration statutes in order to get $25,000 of grant money. It's called the Burn JAG grant, essentially. It turned out that the prosecutor's office had not analyzed this uh, in the last two years, even though uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions had imposed uh, condi those conditions in the last couple of years. So apparently it was certified last year, and this year it was set to be certified again on the uh, consent calendar, which means with no discussion or debate. Uh, we were able to rally a group of people to show up and stop the commissioners from doing that. We need to figure out whether there's any liability attached to that or any harm to our fellow citizens and residents. Thank you. Thank you both. Third question. Uh, what do you see as the top three issues facing law enforcement in this county? And Victor, you have two minutes to answer. I think there's a crisis of justice, uh, a perception of injustice in the system right now. There's a perception of, uh, of prejudice, of uh, insider deals, uh, of, for example, police officers, detectives uh, committing domestic violence and then not being charged. Uh, people are suspicious of that, and rightfully so. Uh, there's very little thought about whether or not something uh, looks like there's a conflict of interest and should be treated differently uh, in, this, in Thurston County as it stands. During the Andre and Bryson uh, uh, incident, the shooting back in 2015, um, that was very poorly handled. And I want to make sure that there are independent means for, by which the county can analyze uh, these exceptional incidents that are very uh, uh, disturbing to the community. I want to start a conviction integrity unit that looks at past misconduct, mistakes, and errors by prosecutors and judges. I want to make sure that people get their just due, even if we have to admit that the office or a prosecutor has made a mistake. That's not happening right now, and I really want it to be the case, because I want people to believe in the system, to believe in its inherent fairness, to believe they can trust a police officer, not to report them to the federal authorities if they want to report domestic violence crime or, or some other incident. It's about public safety. And I want to increase public safety by increasing confidence that uh, prosecutors are being properly managed and uh, disciplined and guided internally, and that the police have an eye on them from the prosecutor. The prosecutor is not the uh, friend or the lawyer for the police. The prosecutor has to be someone who watches the police. Most police officers are good. I have police officers in my family, law enforcement officers in my family, sadly one who recently passed away. But we need to make sure that uh, the bad apples don't poison the thought towards the system. Because when you lose confidence in the system, uh, we lose everything. Thank, thank you, Victor. Uh, John, for, you have one minute. What do you see as the top three issues facing law enforcement in this county? I think uh, one of the top issues is the uh, ongoing um, uh, issues that law enforcement face every day in the street uh, dealing with uh, mental illness and folks who are mentally ill uh, and those who are uh, suffering from substance use disorder uh, or co-occurring. And in particular, I'll say that the opioid epidemic uh, is really a crisis in this uh, county at this time. And law enforcement is challenged with having to respond to that. Um, and we are committed uh, to doing that through uh, the creation of uh, uh, ongoing diversion programs and pathways, if you will, to let people move out of criminal justice into a treatment environment if that's appropriate, and we can do that and keep the community safe. I do agree that one of the other leading issues is to ensure that law enforcement uh, continues to have uh, the trust of the community and is acting in a way that is uh, appropriate and transparent, and I will uh, continue to advocate for that. Thank you. Thank you. John, you get to start with the next question, which is, how would you improve the Office of Prosecuting Attorney? And you have two minutes. Right. 
And uh, as we move forward, uh, my agenda is really to uh, continue to work on criminal justice reform efforts and to really uh, 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 discuss and empower my deputy prosecutors to continue forward with that agenda as well. Uh, we really need to start focusing better on reentry. Uh, that is, uh, the folks that are coming out of the criminal justice system uh, who have served their time, paid their price to the community, uh, been held accountable, but now are coming back into the community uh, are, in my opinion, not well served right now. Uh, and I think we really need to start looking at providing more services and additional services. And I will empower my deputy prosecutors to continue to really um, uh, move that agenda forward. An example of that is our new first look unit, which is a unit that works specifically to uh, uh, look for and seek out and divert cases out of the criminal justice system that don't belong there and uh, offer people opportunities of treatment or uh, mental health uh, case management. Uh, in addition, I think we need to move forward with uh, efforts in uh, moving away from money bail. We've already started some efforts in the criminal justice system in this county to, to make that happen. Uh, we need to implement a, an objective risk tool, and that's in development. And I will be asking my deputy prosecutors to participate in the development of that process so that they trust that tool and are willing to use that tool as they evaluate their cases. We've also expanded our pretrial services program, and we ha now have a very strong partnership with that pretrial services program, as do all of my deputy prosecutors as well. Uh, as we move into the future, I'm hoping that we can uh, move forward legislation which would remove money bail, and I will be asking my deputy prosecutors to give me uh, alternatives and to adopt uh, and embrace this idea of not using money bail. Thank you. Thank you. Victor, how would you improve the Office of Prosecuting Attorney? You have one minute. Thank you. Last summer, in June of 2017, the National Council of Superior Courts did a study on Thurston County's uh, Superior Court system and the prosecutor's office. They found that the prosecutor's office didn't have the most basic policy manual the basic standards to exercise uh, one's prosecutorial discretion. It's not enough to give your prosecutors prosecutorial discretion. They have a lot of it. The question is, what kind of guidance are you going to give and what kind of discipline are you going to impose if they do something wrong? Uh, the problem right now is there's no tracking of that. I've heard time and time again throughout the campaign that uh, the pro there has been no prosecutorial misconduct uh, while uh, the incumbent's been around. But the fact is that there has been, and there are court of appeal cases, for example, the most recent one that I saw was State versus Bruce in November of 2017, where the prosecutors have been found to have committed misconduct. We need to be, pay attention to what they're doing and give them guidance. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, and Victor, you'll get to start for two minutes, how will you balance enforcement of federal, state, and local laws that may not be consistent with each other? You have two minutes. That's uh, one of the essential tasks of a lawyer is to uh, balance uh, those uh, different uh, jurisdictional and uh, constitutional requirements. There's federal law, there's also uh, the Constitution, which is the highest law, federal Constitution, which is the highest law of the land, and there's our state Constitution and state laws. In addition, there's the local uh, county ordinances. All of that has to be taken into effect, and you have to figure out what effectively nullifies or trumps the other one when you're executing your discretion. That's what was uh, distressing to me uh, regarding the uh, commissioner's uh, uh, attempt to accept through the consent calendar uh, the certification of the federal statutes and that there was no analysis done by the prosecutor's office due, uh, after the changes Jeff Sessions made on those requirements in 2017 and 2018. Uh, that's a stunning admission that the prosecutor's office is not doing their job and they're not looking out for you. Because if they can do it for that, they'll, they've done it in other situations as well. So we really need to take a hard look at how the prosecutor's office is being managed. I would like to see uh, what uh, uh, background was done on 
any of, any of those issues involving the federal government because many of our laws are currently being executed, many of the federal laws, in an unconstitutional way that are that's separating families, that's putting kids in cages, and having, having our own children have to watch people being hauled away at uh, school by ICE. So in that situation, in that kind of uh, environment, we need to be extremely cautious about uh, uh, federal law and to look at whether it conflicts with state law or the federal constitution. Thank you. John, you have one minute to answer the question, and I can repeat it if you would like me to. Could you repeat it one more time? Sure. Thank you. How will you balance enforcement of federal, state, and local laws that may not be consistent with each other? You have one minute. All right, thank you. I think it's important for the viewers to know that the prosecuting attorney's office does not enforce federal law. Uh, our role and our responsibility is to enforce state law. That being said, we do have to ensure that our uh, current uh, policies and practices are um, uh, not in violation of federal law or in violation of the federal constitution. Uh, with regard to the Burn JAG grant, which is an example, uh, I a a actually just made the decision to not move forward with that grant. I actually started looking at this issue uh, last week before uh, the, the um, uh, public uh, scrutiny on this particular issue and asked my civil division to do a review of that particular grant. And while we are convinced that the current injunction that's in place in, federal, uh, in the federal court uh, stops the conditions that were put on that grant, we have decided to not move forward with that grant uh, in either 2017 or 2018 until the federal litigation is resolved. I do this because it's important for us to make sure that uh, we are following our own local policy and not that, not that of federal law. Thank you. Okay, last question before closing statements. Um, John, you get to go first for two minutes. How do you plan on interacting with the citizens of this county? So I believe very strongly that the prosecuting attorney's office needs to have a strong connection to the community. And I spend much of my time in the community interacting uh, with people in a variety of different ways. Uh, I serve on a number of different boards in the community. I'm active in uh, many local charities. I'm active in the local uh, bar association. And I have been uh, active and past president of the Government Lawyers uh, Bar Association. That allows me really to interact very uh, strongly with uh, citizens from all over the county to be able to, to receive and, uh, their input and to talk to them about what the prosecutor's office does. I also encourage my deputy prosecutors to do the same. Many of my deputy prosecutors are also uh, very involved in the local community uh, in their own uh, way, whether that's uh, coaching a softball team or a, or a baseball team or uh, acting on a board of a local nonprofit or charity. Um, uh, so with that, the office itself as a whole uh, becomes a part of the community and we add, interact with the community. Uh, that is my philosophy, it always has been my philosophy, and will continue to be as I move forward uh, into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Victor, how do you plan on interacting with the citizens of this county? You have one minute. Well, I plan to continue uh, my activities and interactions as they have been, except I would need to modify them once I became prosecutor. I was on the board of the Government Lawyers Association as well, and I've been on other boards. Uh, my practice now uh, includes representing nonprofits and in, in litigation and both uh, advice as well. However, if I'm the prosecutor, then I have to watch what I, uh, what I do and whether or not there's a conflict of interest. For example, currently the prosecutor's office is a member of the Chamber of Commerce. And personally, I would find that to be a conflict of interest if I had, were a prosecutor because you shouldn't be a member of a, of a group promoting the, the interest of the businesses that you have a responsibility to regulate as a prosecutor. Of course, I would go to their meetings and, and attend and, and uh, talk to people. But I think it crosses the line when uh, you become a member of too many boards, uh, too many private organizations, and you create conflicts for yourself in the office. Thank you. John, you have one minute for a closing statement. Thank you. As I said, I bring 30 years of experience uh, working on behalf of uh, the residents of Thurston County and protecting uh, this community. And I uh, would continue to do so uh, working on some of the innovations that I've already talked about. Uh, 
in my last four years, we've really focused on uh, these ideas of, these innovative ideas of criminal justice reform, and I've been working on that for a number of years with some very uh, strong successes, such as the construction of our triage center, the uh, expansion of our pretrial services program, the addition of additional diversion uh, programs, and perhaps most importantly, uh, the establishment of our first look program, which is uh, really a, a new and innovative idea that I think could become a model for the rest of the state. Uh, so I bring to this the experience of not only working in the system, but working to make the system better. And I will continue to do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And you have one minute for a closing statement. Thank you. Thurston County needs your help. You, the voters, we're in deep trouble. We're spending more money than we take in in revenue. I, this isn't about ideas. It's about execution. And after seven years of leadership of the criminal division and two terms as prosecutor, we've seen what the accomplishments are not ha happening here in Thurston County. For example, the pre-diversion lead program, law enforcement assisted diversion, has been in, started since uh, 2015, and in the time it's been open which, for almost a year, has only assisted one individual. We can't just talk about ideas, we have to execute ideas. First look program is nothing but the typical review a prosecutor should do in every case to see whether or not it should be uh, diverted or handled differently than your typical case in the system. That we're talking about that as an actual program is a sign of the sickness that's afflicting us. We need to stop this as soon as possible. Please, give me your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, John and Victor. And thank you for participating in the League of Women Voters General Election Forum for the Thurston County Prosecuting Attorney. We encourage viewers to vote in the general election November 6, 2018. Remember, ballots are now postage free, so just put them in the mail. The League particularly thanks Thurston Community Media for their ongoing support and assistance. Thank you for joining us today and thank you to the candidates. Thank you, Allison.